What's up guys, it's Daniel here from Glisco, and today we're gonna be doing an RTX 3090 upgrade to fix the thermal throttling issues. Okay, so I pulled up the, uh, the OC tune here just to check out some of the settings on the stock card. And as we can see, the VRAM is very hot, 106 degrees, and the hash rate is fairly low. So we're at 90 hash, and we can see here the, the VRAM is climbing. The GPU temp is low, is good, but the problem here is, is video uh, uh, memory because, you know, with mining, it's very intensive on the VRAM, and we could see that it thermal throttled. Here we got the beautiful RTX 3090 three fan. Look, this is a gorgeous card, gigabyte version. I bought this heat sink from Amazon, thinking that will help a little bit with the thermals. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the back with some ISO because I put some fingerprints on the back here. Go ahead and wipe, wipe this guy down to get a nice clean connection. I'm also gonna wipe the, uh, the card down a little bit as well. Just some more ISO, this is 99% ISO, so this, don't worry, this won't damage your card at all. And I bought some thermal tape here. So this is gonna stick on the back of this heat sink so we can stick it directly on and, and improve thermals a little bit rather than just using you know, some sort of adhesive. I, I bought the thermal adhesive and go ahead and stick it on the back of the card. Um, so I noticed that this did improve the cooling by two to four degrees. Nothing crazy, but it did help a little bit if you don't want to open your card. Here's an industrial knock to a fan. So this is what is really going to help out with that cooling. So here I'm going to show you the knock to a paste that I'm going to purchase to replace the, the thermal paste inside the card as well as the thermal pad here. This is some sort of sub brand Zizio and I'm comparing it to the thermal right. They do have the exact same specs and the Zizio is very cheap compared to it. So we will test to see if this is uh, the same quality and you can see they have the same specs which is the reason why I chose to get this other one. Save some money here. Here you can see all the stuff that I purchased in the screen recording beforehand. Um, I did get another thermal paste as well. I didn't end up using it. So now we can go ahead and open the back of the card. Uh, this is the back plate here. You're gonna remove these screws. They're not very tight. And you're just gonna lightly pry it off. You wanna really make sure that you got all your screws out. And I see here I missed one. So now I'm just double checking to make sure that I got all my car or sorry screws out. Let me go and pop it off. There is a small wire here that I believe uh, powers the LED of the Gigabyte. So let's go ahead and make sure you remove that wire when you are removing the back plate. So there you go, I popped it off. And we could see opening the card here. Um, I'm labeling another wire here on the left because I am just gonna disconnect it. I don't like how it's tugging on it. We could see all the thermal pads and the thermal paste. Let's go ahead and disconnect those previous wires. The thermal paste clearly was evaporated here. It, it didn't look very good. Um, it, was, it was not over the entire card. So you could see here that they didn't do a great job with it. And I don't know the quality of the paste either. So that's why I got this high quality not to a paste. And we can see here I'm pulling it out of the box. They do a really good job with packaging and it comes with a few uh, wipes as well. So now let's go ahead and remove the thermal pads from the card. Um, I didn't use the 2.5 actually. I'm just using it as a gauge to see what the size of the other ones are. So the main ones you're gonna use here are two millimeter and the one millimeter. And I'm just comparing the Zizio and the thermal right to see if there is a major difference here. So it is one millimeter on that edge there. And we're gonna go ahead and measure that. So I would get an X-Acto knife or something to be able to cut this properly. And I left one side of the backing on to be able to easily peel it off afterwards and, and place it nicely without touching the thermal pad too much. So the ones on the edge here, I'm gonna mark it in the video. I'm gonna show you exactly what they are. But they are one millimeter on the edge here. 
and around the GPU they are two millimeter. So those are sitting on the on the VRAM. I'm taking off right here. It was a little bit difficult to take this off, um, so I did end up using like a little scraper, which helped remove some of those pads. And I did decide to wipe it down here a little bit to make sure I had a nice clean surface. So I just made sure that I was using the right pad and I went ahead and cut the right amount that I needed. So again, you wanna really make sure that you're measuring these properly because if you don't, um, it could cause an issue with the closure of the card. So more one millimeter on the side here. There's a lot of pads and it is a little finicky and here we could see that you know it's nice and complete. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the backing paper off all of this. And we have a nice new surface. Now let's go ahead and clean up the GPU. We'll make sure that we, we make it nice and clean. And I'm gonna remove the backing plate now from the card because there are more thermal pads on the back side. I'm gonna remove the power cables and the VRAM is fairly dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, measure out the, the additional pieces here. These are two millimeter as well. And that big block there is actually three millimeter. And let's remove the backing plate. Let's plug it back in. So I'm changing all the thermal pads on this card because I wanna get the best performance possible. You gotta remember which screws you wanna be taking out here because it's not all, there was only three on that, on that side there. So now it's time to put it back. Let's put these wires back on. So that labeling helped me know what, where to put it back and some thermal paste, maybe a little bit too much, but I really wanted to get it all over the card because you don't want to miss a spot there. And let's remember to put the, the final wire back here. You have to do that while you're closing the card. Go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it sits down nice and firmly here. And I'm gonna flip the card over to be able to screw it in. Let's go ahead and install these screws. Um, I would recommend doing in some sort of a star pattern there on the end and make sure everything is nice and tight. Okay, here's the aftermath. Here's after changing those thermal pads. You could see here, this is actually a comparison between a stock card that I had 3090 and the new thermal uh, pads that I replaced. It's running at 125 hash and basically the same temperatures as the stock card, but the stock card is doing 55 hash right now, which is terrible because the power limit is set to 215. I reduced it quite a bit to be able to get proper temperatures. So you could see here that it makes a significant difference, maybe about two, uh, 20 to 30 degrees less um, in terms of the temperature. So no more thermal throttling, 125 mega hash, which is crazy um, for this card. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, now my RTX 3090 is running much better. I can game without it th thermal throttling. And if you want to do a little bit of mining on the side, um, you could get a really good mega hash out of it. Um, if you guys want to see more PC videos, uh, subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.